I, I think we just start. Uh, good afternoon from my side. And <laughs> good morning. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, this is my name is Irene from Image Africa, and this is a session that we've organized together with uh, Dr. Esther Gazishio uh, on soft skills, um, which is the probably the missing link in higher education. And we are going to have her uh, take us through in our own way. Uh, Dr. Esther Gashisho is an education, uh, educational technology consultant and co-founder and CEO of eLearning Solutions. Um, so she's going to take us through her session and tell us more about soft skills and how we can benefit from uh, this, this session. Over to you, Esther. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Irene, and good to see every one of you uh, this afternoon. And uh, hoping to have a discussion with you around the area of soft skills. Um, it's probably not a presentation, but uh, something that we can explore together and see how best we are able to ensure that this works. Um, Irene, if you would allow me, uh, oh, yeah, I think I can. I want to share my screen um, so that we, we can start together. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you very much. So as but, I was saying, yes. But perhaps you need to make it presentation so that it's bigger on your screen, on, on our side. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I, no, I mean, um, click on one of the, the icons that make it slightly bigger so that we don't see the side, the side of it so that Oh, the side. Um, yeah, so that we don't see the side, then it gets slightly bigger. Let me just stop um, sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me try and share it again. Okay. Are we good? Um, you could you could press slideshow at the top and it will give you the um each each That's slide correct. up the what top. Yes. Where the pretty press slideshow up the top. It's still doing That's... its own things. <laughs> can can you see the icons at the bottom of your slide? If you click on mm. the last icon before the okay. the sizing, then it will bring the a different version of, of the share. And you see that uh, the, the little icons at the bottom on the, the three, right hand side. Yeah, the three hand side. The last one before the, the size yes. of, of, yeah, if I'm you click on that. There. So I click on what of, of all the ones that are there. Yes, the, the last one. Yes, I've clicked on it. It has so many things. Show presenter view, screen, camera. Keep yes. Um, no, presenter you've... No, and I, I think you just start. It's okay. <laughs> just start. We'll we can see from. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> it's... I can way. also share the screen for you if you'd like. Let me see. Actually, share the screen for me. Yeah, I can do that. Because it looks like for some reason it's. Decided I can do that. I can do that for you. 
<laughs> so let me stop sharing so that you share it. No problem at all. Okay. That's good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That works. Uh, so you will move alongside me. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry about this. So we will start. And as I started by saying, um, I want us to take this presentation as a uh, as one of those areas that we all need to kind of start thinking about and start looking at whether it's something that we now need to have a deliberate discussion on to try and see if we can um, help bring up the learners who are uh, all-rounded and more so now in the era of technology, more so now being in the information um, age where our students have so much information that they don't know what to do with it. And with that, I think we are losing in, an, in a lot of um, areas. Um, and I think we need to start having conversations around how we are not going to lose our students or our learners or our children for those who are parents in this era of information and lead them to areas that are not right. And one of the things that we think, um, or from where I sit, I think is an area Um, I, I, I work with a company called Elan Technologies to design, develop, and deploy learning and training solutions across the entire spectrum from the, uh, from the primary school, secondary schools, uh, tertiary institutions, and now we are also working with corporates. So part of what we do is mainly consultancy work, uh, where we work with the various uh, clientele to help them build the programs that they want to build and run them uh, web, uh, uh, as web-based training programs. But along the way also, we have started setting up, uh, or rather we set up our own training programs, uh, long and short programs. And more so now we are veering more towards uh, the area of addressing this gap where we have learners who are, uh, are not well grounded and who are finding it very difficult to settle in the world work. So we set up um, e-learning solutions apprenticeship training hub, which is a segment of ELS that deals with social skills training courses. We have a number of such courses within it, and we aim in this hub to design and develop training programs that support our clientele with skills that enable uh, our youth, our employees to settle well in the world of work and also function optimally in the organizations in which they work in, or even in their own enterprises that they set up uh, once they are done with college, or even if they didn't go to college, if they set up those uh, enterprises, then we help enable them, uh, uh, give them skills that will enable them fit and manage and operate within those spaces. And LSAT Hub also focuses on the non-technical skills that may not be comprehensively handled during the training in post-secondary institutions, in preparations for the life after college, and in employment. So this is a space that we are playing in. And as we move along in this presentation, you're going to see um, why we think that this is a very critical area that needs to be looked into. And for us to address that area, I want us to look into or think around uh, various things. Um, which I'm calling food for thought, uh, that will help us reflect on those students we are working with or those students whom we know who are in tertiary uh, institutions or who are training in whatever uh, skills they are training into and who are being prepared to get into this uh, world of work that we are talking about. We know currently that employers are actively seeking candidates with a robust foundation in soft skills. That now has become a critical area, recognizing the pivotal role in fostering a dynamic and collaborative work 
environment. And as the employers are looking for these people, they are looking for enhanced employability. And this is a question we need to ask ourselves. Do our students stand out in crowded job market? We've talked about unemployment, especially in Africa, but these, these students whom we are preparing, are they able to stand out? Are they, are they visible enough based on how they present themselves in this environment that they are getting into? The other thing that we need to think about around our, the students whom we are working with, are they career ready? Yeah, are they career ready? Do they have the skills necessary for career success? Are they globally competitive? Do we produce graduates who are culturally competent and equipped to thrive in uh, diverse environments? And as we do all these things, because we are coming from institutions of higher learning, where we are entrusted to mold these learners to fit within the world of work that we are talking about, are our institutions that we are working with, are they uh, do they portray positive instructional, uh, sorry, institutional image? Can our institutions be distinguished as forward thinking, dedicated to holistic development of its students and responsive to evolving needs of the job market? So these are reflective questions that I would want us as we move along to think through. Look at the students whom we are dealing with, whom we are handling, whom we are entrusted to guide and train and prepare them for the world of work or for the work after, after training and see whether we are able to answer these uh, questions in the affirmative. Having said that, uh, these skills we are talking about, these soft skills we are talking about, what are they? Alexand Alexandra Levitt, a workforce futuristic and author of Humanity Works defines them as the ability to acquire the skills, knowledge and mindset needed to be an engaged and productive member of a team. These soft skills we are talking about, sometimes called or referred to as human skills, are important in the development of individuals, complete, complete personalities, enhancing their career prospects, as well as enabling them to be highly productive in the workplace. They are geared towards behavioral change. And that is why I said when we're starting, they are non-technical. They are not academic in nature. They are developmental and they lead towards a behavioral change. So when you're looking at a student whom you're taking through this program of instilling them with these soft skills, you will not get an instant answer or an instant uh, result today. It will take a process for that to be able to come out in them. So what are some of these abilities that we are mentioning about? And again, as we mention them, let's reflect back to the food of thought that I've talked about in the previous slide. To look at it and see the questions, that four questions we have asked, what of these abilities that we are going to mention apply to us in our institutions, apply to the students whom we are mentoring and whom we are training, and applies to also probably the society in which we are living in, and even to the faculty itself, what skills do we have? Because again, you can't give out what you also do not have. So some of these are abilities, and there are more than this, include work ethics. Do our students uh, whom we prepare, do we prepare them to have work ethics that they can take with them to the world of work? Courtesy, teamwork, self-discipline and self-confidence, professionalism, language proficiency, cultural sensitivity. Remember, we talked about globalization and being culturally sensitive to those whom you're going to, uh, to be working with. Communication skills is a big one. It has been talked about over and over again uh, since time immemorial. Ability to accept and learn from criticism. Ability to handle client relationships. And you've seen, uh, and, uh, and you're going to see some of when we talk about some of the problems that we are encountering, that this is one of the areas that they are not able to relate with those people whom they meet and work with. Um, and especially for clients and customers. And that is why uh, the issue about working and mentally be there and, and, and functioning well in the world of work comes in. Networking, creativity, ability to motivate yourselves and to lead others, time management, 
leadership, interpersonal skills. So these are some of those uh, soft skills or those abilities that we need to see in the students that we are training. That before they finish, um, they, before they finish their training, these are some of the things that they need to have as we release them to the world of work. And the reason we are saying this is because we are all witnessing the changing landscape regarding uh, employability in the global market today. The evolving nature of work and the increasing complexity of, uh, of professional environments, we are seeing that now more than ever, employers are recognizing certain critical aspects and skills that are missing in the technical skills of the students that we are releasing. And the reason is because, as I've said, the landscape is changing. Employment landscape is changing. And it has become a skills-based economy. Being a skills-based economy means that the traditional roles and the industries are evolving into skill-based economy where employers value combination of technical expertise as well as soft skills. And this is where then we are saying that also skills such as communication, teamwork, adaptability, problem solving are becoming an integral part of uh, success uh, of organizational success. So these are some of the things that employers are looking into. Um, especially, uh, and um, after COVID-19 happened, things changed in the way that we knew them. Companies changed how they operated before because we re witnessed them closing down and now coming up. And now when they've come up, they've had to reorganize themselves and to rework certain things that they had, change policies and so on, which means that you'll find yourself in a role which you never trained in or you are not employed for. So do you have the skill of adaptability and flexibility to fit in within what has become out of, uh, from necessity based on what has happened to that organization? The other one is cross-functional collaboration, where many contemporary workplaces require employees to collaborate across diverse teams and functions. Again, COVID-19 taught us a lot that you're not confined within the space that you've been working with. You find yourself now, or companies have found themselves an organization working in diverse areas with diverse teams. And, to, and we need soft skills that facilitate effective communication, cooperation, fostering collaborative environment that is essential for innovative and problem solving to be able to fit within this employ, employ, employment space or this working space. Again, another big, lands, uh, big change that has happened is the automation and technology. Automation and technology has transformed the nature of many jobs, making certain technical jobs less exclusive and emphasizing the importance of uniquely uh, human skills. But we also know that even with this an automation and technology that has taken place, we still need soft skills such as creativity, emotional intelligence, and critical th thinking um, that are difficult to be automated. You cannot automate them but you need them. They are very important in the workplace and they are highly now, they are now more than ever being valued in the workforce or in the workplace because you require them uh, to enable your, your, your companies and or to enable the companies uh, operate op optimally. We've had the issues about, um, uh, issues of mental health that have come across as people kind of have become technical, they, they, they are more like robots. They're operating like ro robots. You're in a machine, you move from this machine to another, and then you, you lose your humanness. So it is important that these skills are integrated within whatever we are doing for us to be able to operate in the ways that we are. Another dynamism that has come in is that most of the businesses are looking at customer-centric focus. Businesses are placing a greater emphasis on the customer experience and satisfaction. So our the, the, the students and the graduates we are releasing into the market need to go into that market knowing that this is where the focus of this market is. And soft skills such as uh, particularly related to interpersonal communication are very crucial in ensuring positive interactions with customers and clients whom they are going to be dealing with. Again, from the experiences of COVID-19, remote, remote work dynamics setting. So there has been a rise of remote work, 
um, and virtual collaborations, which underscores the importance of effective communication, time management, and self-motivation. Now more than ever, you cannot afford to be five minutes late into a meeting because time management, time management has become very, very critical. So again, you will see that soft skills play a crucial role in, my, in maintaining team cohesion and productivity in virtual working environments because you're not there to help each other in a physical manner or even to understand from um, a bodily language what this person wants so you have to be very uh, to be to be very intentional in the way you communicate another uh, dynamic issue that has come in that we need to look into as we train these students is the entrepreneurial mindset that has set in where employers are seeking candidates with entrepreneurial mindset. Individuals who can think creatively, adapt to change, and continue and contribute to the overall growth of the, uh, of the companies and, and innovativeness within those companies. So again, that uh, particular soft skill, entrepreneurial mindset, uh, adaptability, those are critical and criti creative and critical thinking are soft skills that we need to inbuilt within the, the graduates or the students we are preparing for the workplace. I talked about globalization and cultural sensitivity when I started, and this globalization has made workplaces more diverse, requiring employees to navigate um, cultural differences and work effectively with colleagues from various backgrounds. Um, all of us here are working remotely with different organizations. So uh, this has the landscape has opened up to work in various areas. In Kenya today, the government is really pushing towards um, remote work and having uh, our, our young people work remotely and work with other organizations internationally, trying to bring down um, job uh, joblessness within the country. So with that coming in, then cultural sensitivity sets in and we need skills like cultural competence and effective cross-cultural communication for essential, uh, to, uh, which are very essential in this type of context. Um, and finally, we have our leadership qualities as being another landscape that has come. And nowadays it's not leadership, leadership is not, not, not confined any longer or anymore to managerial roles. Employees at all levels are expected to demonstrate leadership qualities. So therefore we need to inbuild this skill within them. And this skill of leadership encompasses emotional intelligence and also the ability to inspire and motivate others um, as they as they get into the spaces that they are going to be into. Now, having said that, we've done a very good, uh, we've done well in looking at um, what these skills are and also reflecting through uh, what the market is looking for or the job is uh, job market is looking for. And um, we have also touched on why it is necessary to adapt and change based on the landscape or the changing landscape that you're finding ourselves into. Now, I want to just pick out a few uh, statements that have been expressed in regard to the type of graduates we are preparing. And when they get to the world of work, what the employers find. And um, this I have picked from a few places. Uh, they might be dated, but at least they mention or they tell us exactly. I mean, it could even be worse now based uh, on how things are going. And this is where the problem is. And this is the, the reason why we need to deliberately and intentionally think about instilling these life skills within the training programs in our institutions. So there has been concerns about the quality of newly released graduates in the job market in terms of their presentation, communication, enthusiasm, and commitment to work. For those who employ, this is a big one, where you, um, and you'll see a quote that I made some time back, where you uh, uh, ask or call out for applications, people write and give you very nice uh, uh, CVs and their portfolios of what they are and what they've done and what they can do. But when they appear before you, um, it's a totally different story. 
then a significant number of employers believe that candidates searching for jobs lack the vital soft skills needed to perform a job successfully. Remember, we said that the, the kind of um, uh, employees employers are now looking for are people with an entrepreneurial mind who can increase productivity, who can help the, the, the institutions grow. But the kind of graduates they are getting are people who lack those kind of skills that will take them where they want. So in most cases, they will lack or they will miss out on jobs and employees, even when we have technically enabled students whom we have released. Then 89% of recruiters say when a hire doesn't work out, it usually comes down to a lack of soft skill. I'm sure you can attest to this, even based on what we have said so far. 92% of hiring managers believe that soft skills are just as important as hard skills. And then um, another one is that 48% of recruits fail within the first 18 months. Only 11% of those who fail are, uh, are attributed to lack of complex abilities. The remaining 89% are caused by lack of soft skills. Today we are seeing employers um, employing half or maybe 50% of the technical skill. No, around 25% of technical skills and 75% of soft skills because these abilities are inbuilt. Technical skills you can train. So they would rather train on the technical skills as opposed to train on soft skills. So they will take you, if you have some limited um, abil technical abilities and you have maximum or high level soft skills, because they know you're trainable, you'll adapt and you'll be able to learn and fit in within the culture of the institution. Another, um, in Kenya, for example, every year we release about 80,000 to 150,000 graduates into the market. Our education system has been blamed for being exam ridden with an overemphasis on academic performance at the expense of human or soft skills, such as cooperation, collaboration, teamwork, among other societal virtues. I'm sure uh, this is not only a Kenyan problem, but a problem that is global, where uh, most, in most cases, our examination, oh, sorry, our, uh, our education is uh, more knowledge-based that encourages a lot running and very few competencies are attained. So this is something that I'm sure uh, most people would attest to from wherever they are coming from. We also know that most graduates are not taught the skills needed in life after college and in the job market. Uh, we'll see some examples of those who have tried, but in most cases, they are not taught in any training or learning institution. Most of them do not access employment due to what employers have termed as egocentric, passive, and an innovative tendencies. We've also seen concerns where uh, the employers are concerned with the new graduates because they lack the skills of adaptability, agility, flexibility, they cannot solve problems, and therefore they, they have been complaining about that. And there's very little they can do about it since they have no idea what to do. There also have been rising uh, cases of mental instabilities, which I have mentioned earlier, and these are carried out, uh, they are carried to the workplaces. Um, not so long ago, I saw this quote, I made it somewhere and then it made its way to the newspapers as a quote for the week. And I don't know whether you can relate with it, that one thing employers will tell you is that in Kenya, and this was based on our own setup here in Kenya, are not short of good CVs. People write very good CVs, but when the person and the CV appear in front of you, they're totally disconnected. I don't know who else attests to this. So that is the context in which we are operating on. So we are releasing students from our institutions that are not, uh, that, that are not being absorbed into the workplaces. So the problem remains. We'll have a big pool of students who are unemployed or graduates who are unemployed. And we have institutions and organizations that have jobs that cannot be taken and they say they can't get the right people to fill in these gaps. So why are we not preparing our graduates to become all-rounded 
and to entice the market uh, or the job market to take them up or even to set up their own enterprises because so many of them are even taught how to do that. But once they get out there, they're not able to do so. So let us briefly look at some of the obstacles or some of the problems or challenges that affect the integration of soft skills in higher education. And we shall attempt to provide a solution for each context. Hopefully, um, th there are more solutions uh, than the ones probably I would mention. This is just like a guide, and then we can explore and see. And these also are a few challenges. There could be more, which we can look into and also try and see how we can um, address them. So one of the obstacles, and this one comes uh, from our institutions is curriculum overcrowding, where existing curricula may be densely packed with technical content and leaves very little room for anything else, including the integration of soft skills. And um, how probably we can go around this is try and deliberately and intentionally streamline existing curricula by identifying areas where soft skills can be seeming, seeming, uh, seamlessly integrated. And this may involve maybe revising the cost structures or incorporating soft skills components into existing courses, or sometimes like what we are already doing in some of the institutions where we are co-offering co soft skills with them. In this regard, what happens is that um, uh, like uh, some of the institution, it's a varied way, like one of the institutions, they have taken the eight uh, our eight programs or eight units and spread it across the four years. So half of them are done the first and second year, the other half is done third and fourth year. And because they are self-paced and very interactive, all they require from us is finally the certificate to showcase that they've actually gone through that case, uh, the courses. So you can look for various other ways of ensuring that you streamline soft skills within the training programs. And then another challenge is normally resistance from the faculty. So the faculty members and uh, uh, may be resistant to change, but sometimes they don't resist this change um, they resist it not because they will just want to resist, but because they, in most cases, lack the necessary training to effectively teach these skills, or even lack uh, the necessary information on how they can inbuild these particular skills within the teaching and learning uh, uh, processes. And also for pro probably because of the initial uh, challenge that I've mentioned, the curriculum overloads. So they do not have any time to think about anything else but to deliver what has been given to them. And maybe how we can go around this as one example or one suggestion is provide professional development opportunities and training programs for the faculty to enhance their understanding on the importance of soft skills and to equip them with the effective teaching methods. And this, um, as I have mentioned earlier on, create awareness on the needs interact with the industry, for the industry to tell you what is it that we are looking for, so that you can provide it. And you only do so if you're aware of it, you're aware of the missing gap, and you are uh, well uh, versed on how to do that. So again, training, uh, advocacy, and uh, and change in the way we are, we are conducting, conducting training will really change, or will really help in sorting out this problem. Another obstacle is assessment challenges. As I started by saying, um, soft skills is a developmental process. You develop those skills and they are not developed in a day or two days or a week. It, it's aimed towards changing behavior so that people turn and change and are transformed to become the better versions of themselves. And you cannot assess this in the normal way that we assess anything academic or anything else that we assess. So assessing soft skills can be subjective and challenging compared to the traditional academic uh, assessment. And this then therefore calls for a different way of assessing these um, skills, whether they have been well uh, internalized and to watch over time, whether the behavior has been changed in the, if, uh, once, they uh, once these uh, skills are inculcated in our students. So we need to develop innovative assessment methods such as project-based evaluations, reflective portfolios or peer assessments to measure soft 
uh, soft skills development uh, to, to, uh, to measure them. So we also need to provide clear criteria and rubrics for assessing these skills that cuts across and everybody understands them within the institutions. Uh, tied to that is the traditional grading systems. And these grading systems may not effectively capture the development of soft skills, as I have mentioned, uh, which are often qualitative and context dependent. So again, uh, furthering what I have just mentioned as a way to look at it on how to solve this, we need to explore alternative evaluation methods such as competency-based assessments, self-assessments, and narrative evaluations that provide a more uh, nuanced understanding of students and how they have developed once they have been uh, exposed to these uh, skills. Lack of resources uh, is a big one in anything that we do. And lack of resources is not just about finances or money or funding, but also of time. Remember, we've talked about curriculum overloads that may affect the, uh, the integration of these soft skills. So there are limited resources, including time, funding, and also specialized instructors, uh, which may hinder uh, comprehensive soft skills programs within our institutions. So we can look around various ways on how to mitigate this. For example, prioritize the allocation of resources for the integration of soft skills. And this could involve securing funding, reallocating existing resources, or leveraging external partnerships to enhance program offering. And this also includes um, training of faculty on how to offer this, and this will require resource allocation to that. Another challenge or obstacle that we experience, and we have also been experiencing as employers and as, of, uh, as those offering this particular program on soft skills, is the resistance from the students. And they resist uh, th this uh, inclusion of soft skills in their education, perceiving them as less tangible or immediately applicable uh, than technical skills. They do not see the use of these skills when they are training or when they are in the institutions. And we've experienced that when we have been trying to offer these skills to the students. So you'll find that they are registered. Sometimes they are paid for by their parents to register into the program. So the registration is done or even at the institution level. But to get them to start the courses, is a tall order. So you walk around them, you try to entice them, you try to talk them, they'll never get time for these particular programs because they don't attach uh, importance to ease. But what we have realized is that once we get them to eventually start off the course, the, we don't normally have dropouts. We have almost 80 to, six, uh, 80 to 90 success rate, uh, completion success rate mm -hmm. once they start working on it. So we need to educate uh, the students about the real world value of soft skills and their impact on employability and also uh, the importance of it in career success so we need to demonstrate to them how the world looks like what the world is uh, looking into achieving and the world of work and therefore using this then they will be able to understand the importance of why they need to have that standardized uh, lack of standardization i mentioned it as we started, uh, where the absence of standardized guidelines and policies for incorporating soft skills into the curriculum can lead to inconsistencies across different programs and also in the institutions. Even within the, the institutions themselves, if you do not have a clear guidance on how you integrate, then it will pose a problem. So we need to collaborate with the educational associations and the industry experts to establish, uh, to establish standard guidelines uh, that will help us uh, seamlessly integrate these uh, soft skills within the institutions of higher learning and across board all that apply across board. Limited recognition by stakeholders. I said earlier on employers and other stakeholders may not fully recognize the importance of soft skills until they get students who do not have them and they realize they cannot fit within their institutions. In most cases, they also do not understand what is that missing gap. Why is this a particular graduate not able to, uh, to, to integrate within our institutions. Sometimes they do not know. Uh, but they, what they know is that the, the skill the person presented in is not fitting within our organization. So it is important to engage employers and the industry leaders to also communicate the value of these soft skills and so that all of us may have a common understanding 
and also showcase success stories and collaborate with industry uh, partners to align soft skills uh, programs with industry uh, with the industrial needs. Resistance to change, uh, not just from the faculty, but also from the institutions uh, themselves, where they do not, uh, they, the institutions have cultures that are deeply rooted in traditional academic values, and they resist uh, a shift towards uh, prioritizing other things, including soft skills. So we need to foster a culture of innovation, adaptability within the institutions, and also highlight the long-term benefits of producing well-rounded graduates with both technical and soft skills. I believe every institution would be happy when they are offering, uh, when their students are well uh, taken or are so absorbed in the workspace. And more so, for example, uh, if you find yourself or you, you, you do your treasure studies and find your students are thriving and doing very well in the institutions that they are employed into. And finally, um, challenges, in measuring long-term impact, I said this being a process, a developmental process that takes time and the output is seen through behavioral changes, um, measuring the long-term impact can become uh, a, a, such a challenge because these guys will come, be there with you for four years and then leave. So how will you know that what you instilled with them has become uh, impactful? So measuring long-term impact of soft skills development on students' careers sometimes can be a challenge and probably a way to look into um, solving this particular challenge is to establish uh, alumni networks and conduct longitude, longitude no, can't pronounce that word, studies to track the career trajectories and also the successes of these graduates uh, who have undergone uh, such soft skills within your institutions uh, and also use this data to demonstrate the enduring impact of such initiatives. So when we address these obstacles, uh, while addressing them, we require concerted efforts from the institutions themselves, the faculty, the students, the industry who will receive our students once we are finished with them, uh, to collaboratively design and implement effective strategies for integrating soft skills into the higher institutions. Now, a lot of this is being done in most institutions. But as I said, not many institutions have integrated soft skills within their learning and training programs. So I'll just mention a few and, and what they are currently working on so that we can use them, um, we can borrow from them, we can uh, probably also, um, what is this one, benchmark with them, even as we try to also uh, institution, institutionalize uh, soft skills within our training programs. So there are some that I have mentioned, the main, they're not all, they're just a few that I picked just to show you that it actually works and it is working in some institutions that have taken into, uh, that have taken them in. Those in South Africa, Tony, uh, uh, Tony and Jacob, I'm sure you'll attest to some of this. For example, University of Pretoria in South Africa, um, has been recognized for its focus on holistic education. It offers programs that aim to develop leadership, communication, and critical thinking skills. Some of these programs are actually disjointed. So we need to start thinking of how we can have a wholesome program that accommodates all the soft skills that are required in the market within a go. And I'll give an example or a case study of how we have tried to work around that. Uh, University of Namibia, the, sorry, University of Nairobi here within Kenya uh, has initiatives and workshops that focus on entrepreneurship, leadership, and communication skills. Um, it also emphasizes practical skills through projects and internships. And through projects and internships, other skills come in from teamwork um, to flexibility, to communication skills, to creativity, and so on, that are brought in by various ways of, 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 of delivering the learning programs. Achenzi University in Ghana places strong emphasis on soft skills, including critical thinking, communication, ethics, and leadership. And uh, the university's liberal art-based curriculum integrates all these skills across the various disciplines. 
Another one is Strathmore University in Kenya that has implemented initiatives that enhance students' soft skills, which includes communication. And you can see some of them are running across the various universities, uh, teamwork, problem solving. Uh, this university in, uh, in particular emphasizes on the development of a well all rounded student. And Strathmore does that for a cross board, right from the primary education all the way to secondary education and also not at the university level. So their programs actually have integrated a lot of soft skills along the way where they even have community uh, activities uh, that earn credits to the learners. And that, and in those community activities, they actually bring out a lot of these uh, soft skills that we have talked about. University of Cape Town, um, where Tony Jacob are, I, I, I hope that you will agree with me uh, that you have focused on leadership and entrepreneurship, which encourages students to engage in extracurricular activities to develop teamwork and also communication skills. Um, then we have African Leadership University. Uh, in the, its campuses in Rwanda and Mauritius offer a leadership-focused curriculum. Uh, the university aims to develop innovative, ethical, and entrepreneurial leaderships through a problem-based and experiential uh, learning approach. Those are the approaches that I'm saying we need to incorporate within our learning, uh, our learning spaces to be able to bring out these particular skills that we are talking about. Makerere University in Uganda also um, has made attempts to integrate soft skills within its uh, Institute of Social Research and various programs that emphasize critical thinking, communication, as well as uh, research skills within uh, the various disciplines in the institution. Uh, Stellenbosch University, again in South Africa, um, it has implemented programs to enhance leadership and communication skills, and it also emphasizes the importance of ethical decision making in various disciplines. Now, ethical decision making today is a very, very critical skill to inbuilt in institutions of higher learning. We are working with AI. We are working with um, generative AI, especially among the youth, that is a chat GTP, where we are calling upon um, ethical approaches to minimize on cheating and plagiarism that is coming in very strongly by using this AI, uh, um, this AI tools. So therefore, um, in all the institution, one of the things that we need to look into and guard against losing is ethical decision making. And this, we need to also relook at how we are doing our training, how we are assessing, so that we are not working towards uh, looking for mistakes or looking for people who have plagiarized or people who are cheating, but how can we use this information that is generated through these tools to enhance learning and then change our assessments, like I have mentioned earlier on, and use maybe competency-based approaches and many other types of problem-solving approaches so that you're able to test what it is that they have learned using these tools as opposed to demonizing them. So it all boils down to ethical decision-making that we as institutions need to really look into. Covenant um, University in Nigeria um, is known for integrating leadership and entrepreneur she programs into its curriculum and the university aims to produce graduates who are strong ethic who have strong ethical foundations and leadership skills and finally university of dar es salaam in tanzania uh, focuses on entrepreneurship and leadership development and it also encourages its students to participate in extracurricular activities to enhance their soft skills so you can see the various examples of the various of what institutions have been trying to do towards that but as i said most of them are disjointed we probably need to start thinking of a harmonized way of doing it or integrating these skills um, in a more comprehensive manner so that as our students live they live with all these skills inside them not just leadership or entrepreneurship, but they get the full package of that. So having said that, I have given uh, the scenario and the context in which we are working in. We have experienced most of those issues and problems that I have mentioned when we have been trying to hire. We've listened to the market and the industry 
and we've seen the gap that is there and I have mentioned all the issues about it. So I just wanted to mention very, very briefly as I close, what is it that we have done? What is this uh, LSAT program that we come up with to try and solve these issues and these problems that we've talked about? So under our LSAT program, we have one among the many programs that we have because besides the 21st century soft skills program, we have uh, a program called World of Work 2 that is responding to the new uh, programs or new employments that are coming up from remote uh, from remote work to working overseas or working in the sea. So those are new areas of uh, or the blue economy. Those are new areas of employment that are coming up and we are trying to help the, our students, our graduates to adjust and adapt to all these new environments and look for opportunities in those new areas. So we have, as much as we have World of Work One within uh, the 21st century soft skills, we also have a more comprehensive one as World of Work Two. We have a program on mental health that again emanated from our first unit, which is personal development, that brought up about uh, a lot of issues that the young people have uh, have been uh, have been experiencing, and they had no idea what to do and where to go. And therefore, we brought in a program of mental health to help stabilize them, even as they go into the world of work. And there are very many other aspects around uh, that particular one. We have project management, we have entrepreneurship, as others. Uh, other courses that we have. But today I just want to give an example of the 21st century soft skills course that I've just mentioned about. Um, and uh, from the, um, uh, what is it called? From what we had been given as a brief on what this particular program is going to be, we already have um, the link into where you can find our courses. It's a fully online course and it is self-paced. It's interactive in nature because we expect you what you learn to go and practice and feed it within your e-journal and e-portfolios and also work not only on discussion forums with others who are taking the course or in the institutions, but also collaboratively work with others who are outside the course. There are, there are certain areas that will let you do that and projects and also uh, push you to certain projects that will enable you apply the uh, apply what you have learned and build that skill. Um, again, it is a nine course unit. Uh, the course duration is between two to three because of the interactivity and also the hands-on experience that we expect them to perform. And then ultimately after that, you get the certificate. Uh, once you have gone through it, it's very rigid. You can't move from one place to the other. You have to go through the program as is. Uh, the contents of the course include uh, the introduction to the entire program, personal management uh, skills that have brought out mental health issues that we are now working on and which are also addressed in our webinars, uh, interpersonal relations, uh, making effective decisions, make, uh, managing our health, which again emanate from personal management skills. You'll find that people uh, have uh, health issues based on decisions they make because of who they, their personalities are. We have leadership. We have talked about leadership being uh, not just for managerial, but everybody now must be a leader in whatever it is that they're doing. The citizenship, what is your role in your country? What are you supposed to be doing as a citizen of that country? I've mentioned about world of work, introducing them to what to expect in the world of work and how to adjust to fit within that world of work and be productive and fit in within the cultures of the organizations that are going to employ you. And then finally, financial management, which has also contributed to a lot of mental issues and other interpersonal relation issues because of mismanagement of finances. So that's a package that based on what we have encountered within our spheres, we put together that to help manage. So how do we know the assessment, as we had mentioned earlier, that we need to adopt, uh, that uh, will ensure that we are achieving what we are doing? We ascertain that they have done the course through the reflective journals that we uh, that they jot. They document their entire journeys, including all the activities that they are able to do. All the assessment assignments that they are given are put in in a new portfolio. And then we have self-assessment and we have automated quizzes where they use to check on what they have learned and whether they have learned it well or they have absorbed it. Um, again, I talked about interactivity through synchronized charts, 
discussion forums and webinars. Webinars have been brought about by the various aspects and issues that are coming out as they go through these programs. Mental health has been a big one that has come up. Drug and substance abuse has been a big one that has come up. Issues of financial management has been big. So we have included webinars for each of the topics to where they they meet with experts and where they get a deep dive a deep dive in it, everything that they are doing. So we are working with experts in the areas of uh, counseling, uh, therapists in psychosocial and mental health therapies, financial experts, and HR experts, especially helping them to navigate in the, uh, uh, in the various um, work opportunities that come along. So what are the requirements? They only need to be computer literate, to have a device that can access internet because all our programs are uh, fitting within whichever uh, device that you're working with. And above all, we need you to come in when you are energetic and eager to learn and be a team player. Those, those skills, we need to see them even as you come onto the course. Um, those are some of the, what we expect to see in you after you're done with our programs personal uh you will be able to demonstrate personal proper personal development and proper management of the self interpersonal skills able to relate with others and to fit in within whichever cultures that you're working in uh if you must be or we want to see that you have become very effective in, man in financial management you have very strong work ethics Remember I mentioned this work ethics from adaptability to flexibility, to innovativeness, to creativity, to leadership. We want to see them in you as you move along. Creativity and innovativeness I've mentioned and also the entrepreneurial mindset that the employers are looking into. Who are we targeting? We are working with institutions of higher learning, the universities and colleges and we target, um, well, it now varies when we started off, we're targeting those who are close to finishing, but now some of the institution are taking it and spreading it across the entire training um, process of the, of the students. Uh, we also target working with organized training institutions, those who are, offering, who are offering internship and industrial training programs. We also target human resource practitioners who are recruiting our students to, for, the, for, for the various organizations. And also in those organizations, we are using these programs as an induction on a, on an, or an orientation program. So basically that's just an example of what it is that we are, just to give an example of what can be done. There are probably many other people that will be doing it and offering this, but it is something that we need to start working and thinking about and to know that Actually, it can be done, it is being done, and where you can get that information and how you can work around to get that inside, uh, I mean, done. So having said that, I think I've taken you through the entire process. Uh, I have overshot my presentation by a few minutes, uh, but I'm happy to engage further with you, look into what exactly it is that you'd want us to work with you on, and yes, it is something that is, improper, uh, that is of importance and which we all need to think about. So thank you very much. And over to you, um, Irene, to proceed on from there. Thank you. Oh, thank you so, so much for a wonderful, wonderful uh, session, uh, Esther. Uh, we appreciate that. I'm going to stop sharing so that we can have a conversation and we can finish shortly. We have some questions or some insights or some um, contributions in the chat uh, from Stephen is asking. Uh, he says, thank you so much for this information, uh, informative session. Soft skills are indeed the new hard skills in your view is gen generative AI generative AI likely to enhance or stifle development of soft skills? And I think uh, among the youth, and I think uh, Tony had also raised the same thing about AI. Perhaps you can talk about that. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Irene and Stephen for asking that question. Actually, the where I was yesterday, Irene, we, we had quite a serious discussion around this. 
And um, one of the things that we said, and I want to answer it very, very, um, in a very simple way, because that becomes the basis of everything. Now, technology is here to stay. Technology is changing every day. AI came, we have smart homes, smart everything, smart cities. We have generative AI now where students are actually using it for uh, almost everything to look for whatever information. And I mentioned somewhere along the way, as I talked about cheating and plagiarism using these AI tools and most and most of the generative AI. And that is why I was saying that it is important for us to realize or to know and talk about why are we using technology. We are using technology to help us navigate life or do life in an efficient and proper manner, but not the other way around. But we are looking like we are letting the uh, technology lead us and it is leading us in the wrong ways. And that is why we have lost it in terms of humanness. That is why we are bringing up children who have no morals, who have no values, who have no culture, who have no virtues, because we have let information and information age and technology take the lead instead of the other way, us controlling that, um, controlling the use of technology. And therefore, yes, if we are not careful, generative AI is likely to enhance or stifle development in soft skills. And that is why I started by saying we need to make intentional and deliberate efforts to reinstitute and re and bring back these skills within our young children, right from when they are at home all the way to the institutions, so that as they do whatever it is that they are doing, they will consciously know they are using technology to enhance what they know, but not technology taking over their lives, because that is what has happened. And that is why we are having as many problems as we are having. So as somebody has said here, soft skills now is actually the hard skill that everybody needs and all our learners need. And we need to start thinking on how we are going to bring it back before we lose an entire generation. So allow me to just say it there, that way, so that technology is here to stay. Automation, as I mentioned, is a way of life now, but that does not stop us from being human and that we need to embrace and bring back our humanness as we apply all the technologies that are coming and that will keep to, keep on coming. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Esther. I, I think humanity is, is, is what should guide us more than technology so that we can be a better generation or better people, better humans. Um, I, I do not know if anyone else has a comment or a question that you can just uh, take the mic so that we can have at least some um, some voice from the floor, please. Uh, anyone with a question or just a comment uh, based on what you've heard so far? And I've also shared um, a link where you can give us feedback, please. Feel free to give us feedback when the session is over or during the session if you can. Uh, anyone who is willing to say something from the floor? Just raise your hand or just take the mic before we, we end the session. Um, looks like um, you've answered all the, uh, the questions. We will be sharing a lot of uh, the links and the resources that Esther, Dr. Esther Kasishu has, has shared with us today. Uh, we'll be sending all that to you. Um, we are very, very grateful that you joined us today. Some of you joined us a little late. We'll be having, um, uh, we'll be sharing the, <laughs> we'll be sharing the, the recording and a lot of other things. So thank you so, so much for joining us. And we appreciate your time. Thank you, Esther, for joining us and, and uh, having the time to, you know, go through this session. Uh, please remember that the course is available. Um, we'll be sharing the link uh, for the course in the resources that we'll be sharing. Thank you and have a good afternoon, good evening or good morning. Bye for now.